How are you guys? Good. Doing good? Doing good? I'm doing amazing. I am doing spectacular. Spectaculicious, actually. So, tonight, if, you don't, if you're new here, I just want to welcome you. I want to say a very warm welcome and thank you for being here. Um, this is honestly the best youth group you could ever go to. Like, I'm not biased or anything, but th this is an awesome group of people, awesome group of kids. Some really great leaders. Speaking of leaders, Jake mentioned it briefly earlier, but Pastor Josiah is not with us tonight. The reason being, they just had a baby boy. Yeah! <laughs> no, his, his name is not Jaquandre, but... Okay, all right. <laughs> so keep, keep them in your prayers. Um, that everything just continues to go smoothly and every, everything's, everybody's healthy and safe. So with him being gone, I, I get the opportunity to speak. If you don't know me, I am Elijah, or as Jake referred to me as Bob. <laughs> Bob is not my real name, okay? <laughs> Bob is a nickname, but we won't go into how that came about. All right? So today... We're going to be continuing our series, uh, Not in This World, Living Counterculture. So if you've been here, we've been going through this for several weeks now. And uh, if you haven't, we'll do a quick, a quick recap to, to go over, you know, what, what we've been talking about. You know, so living not in this world, living a counterculture life. We talked about not being in the world or, or being in the world, but not of it. So we live here, but we're not a part of the world. So th this isn't our eternal home. We're, we're, we're placed here, but this isn't, we're not from the world, we're from God. Um, being set apart from the world, we talked about that. We talked about where do people find truth today, if you remember that. People, where, where do people find truth, right? They go to their opinions, they go to social media, they go to the news. But all that's false, right? All that isn't reliable, that's based off people's opinions. But we looked where we find truth is in God's word, right? In 2 Timothy 3.16, it says, All scripture is inspired by God and is useful to teach us what is true. God's word is truth. So if we're looking for truth, we go to God's word. We, we also talked about guarding what you let into your mind. I think this is the last time we met, which was two weeks ago. We talked about guarding what you let into your mind. You know, what, what, are, you, what are you letting? Are you, are you just letting anything into your life? Are you just letting anything push you, pull you, whichever direction it, wanted, it's, it wants to take you? Or are we, are we in God's word? Pastor Zai talked about the importance of being in God's word, the importance of spending time reading, spending time praying every day, each morning. So we're, we're filling ourselves with God's word so we can have these boundaries, so we can have these things set up so we're not just letting anything that the world has to offer into our life, right? So we're going we're gonna to continue talking about this today. We're going to continue talking about living counterculture in the world, but not of it. What, what, you know, what does that mean? What does that look like? One, one way we're going to really focus on tonight is identity. All right? We're going we're gonna to look at, you know, what that means. What does it mean to identify with something? Um, one, one way that culture really likes to pull us and, and change us is with our identity, right? That was one of the first things culture tried to do. We talked about it briefly um, a couple of the past weeks in Daniel. Uh, we looked at Daniel 1. What did the king try to do? He, he went around. He got, he got in these men from Israelites. They're captive. They're Israelites. They're from a different culture. So the first thing he tried to do was change their identity, right? He's like, go pick out young men. Number one, train them in the literature, in the culture, and in the language of the Babylonians, right? So they're Israelites. He's trying to change their culture and, and make them something else. So that was the first thing, right? Let, make them learn the history. Make, make them learn the language so they can speak the right language and not speak in nonsense. They don't understand each other. The second thing was they gave them new names, right? For Daniel... And his three friends, he gave them all new names. Daniel, he called him Belteshazzar, completely different. 
He wanted to give him a name that fit the culture, right? It's like, it's like my name. I made the joke, you know, my name's Elijah. But people call me Bob. My, I am Elijah, all right? Whether or not you disagree or agree, I am Elijah, okay? That's who I identify as. Bob is a nickname. But these, these were their names. They're trying to pull them into this different culture. So they, they train them in the language and the history. They give them new names. And then they gave them a new diet, right? They, they were, put, took them into the castle, fed them the king's palace food and, and, and whatever wine and all the good meat so that they would look healthy and be strong and look fit. If you look at the story... Obviously, Daniel and his friends, they weren't going to completely go with the culture. Even though they were captive and slaves, they couldn't help all the things that they were being forced to do. But the one thing that they didn't change is their identity in God. Daniel said, listen, give me some time. I'm going to eat vegetables, veggies. And I'm going to look fatter and better than the rest of your guys. And that's exactly what happened, because he chose to keep his identity in God instead of just letting it float away with what the Babylonians had to offer. If culture can get you to accept an identity, it will get you to reject your identity in God. You can't, you can't serve two things, right? Matthew, Matthew 6, it talks about you can't serve God and money, right? Right? You can't be over here, oh, I'm this rich person. I love all this money. This is, this is who I am. But then it's like, well, where's God, right? Where, where's God? You can't serve both. It's same thing with, with identity. You can't have your identity in something this world has to offer and have your identity in Jesus. It's one or the other. So we're going we're gonna to look into this a little more, and we're going to dive in. What, is it, what does it mean? What does identity mean? And more about it. But before we do that, If you can bow your heads, let's pray. God, I thank you for tonight. I thank you for all that you've done. I thank you for the opportunity for me to speak. God, I pray that your spirit would rest on this place. I pray that every word I speak would not be my own. Every word I speak would be yours. God, I pray that there would be hearts open, minds, ears open to hear what you have to say tonight, God. I pray that we would be in this room with an expectancy to see what you have to do tonight and what you have to say to us and what you have to teach. I pray that you, a blessing on tonight. I pray that you would um, bless the service and everything we do. In Jesus' name, amen. So, what is identity? I need some water. What, what, does it mean, what does it mean to identify in something? What does that mean? What, what do you mean identity? Like, the definition, I looked it up. Write this down. If you don't have your notebook out, please take it out, all right? Because Pastor Josiah says all the time, wow, you guys, you guys are smart. The definition, write this down. The definition for identity is It is how people define themselves, the distinguishing character or personality of an individual. I'll say it again so you can get it. It is how people define themselves, the distinguishing character or personality of an individual. So it's something you fit in with. It's something that you choose to relate to or or something people see you as, right? It's like, oh... They, they see this person at this, as this, or I kind of fit in here. This is, this is who I am because this is where I fit, or I'm going to choose to fit in here, right? It's the characteristics of who I am. It makes me up. It's what makes me who I am. It's what makes you who you are. What are you? How would you define who you are, right? That's what, that's what identity is. I want to I wanna share a little bit about myself, my testimony. If you don't know me, um, I grew up in a Christian home, godly parents, uh, grew up in church all my life. My dad is the assistant pastor at the church I grew up in, so I was a good kid. I knew all the right things to do and was heavily involved in the church, heavily involved in serving. We were always the first people to show up 
last per people to leave, if there was an event, we were setting up and we were tearing down. I was there for everything. And you, and you may ask, well, what, what, that, that's a good thing, right? Yes, that is a very good thing. But the problem was I chose to identify with those things. And I chose to identify in being a good person. So I knew, I knew what all the people expected of me. I knew what my pastor wanted of me. I knew what my parents wanted of me, all the leaders above me in my life. And I looked like a good person. I was really good at looking good. I, I was serving everywhere. I played drums. I did PowerPoint. Like anything you can think of, I did. But at that time, that's where my identity was. My identity wasn't with God. My heart at that time was so far away from God, people could see me and they'd be like, oh, he's a good kid. He's got a servant's heart and he's, he's serving you know what? I would walk out of that church afterwards. I hated that church, despised going there, despised God, like hated him. But people would look at me and be like, oh, he's a good person. You know, you can look good, but not be right with God. I chose, I chose to hide behind this identity of looking good and of, of being a good person. I serve. No one would have ever known. No one would have ever known that I was, I was you know, hated them, didn't want to be there. Because I, I looked like I did, right? I was involved in everything. I knew everybody. I was the, one of the pastor's kids. But my heart was so far from God at that time. You can place your identity in so many different things that isn't God. Even, even if they're good things, if, it's not, if your identity isn't in God, it's not right, right? I found my identity in, in multiple different things. That's just, that's just one example. Another example, I think we have a picture, if we can pull it up. I am a drummer. Was a drummer, is a drummer still. Well, that's exactly the thing. You may be like, all right, drumming's good, right? I just got off the drums right now. You're like, what are you saying? What's bad about being a drummer? The problem is I found my identity in that, right? I was in a couple different bands. Oh, okay, no one cares. Exactly. No, you don't want to know. They're actually good. They were Christian bands. Okay, I'll say that. Any drummers? Is there any drummers? I know Isaiah drums. A couple? Okay, a couple? All right. The, the few and the blessed. No. But I found my identity in being drummers, in a, in a drummer, right? I, my identity wasn't in God. I wanted to look like a drummer. I was in these bands. You can see. What, what do drummers wear? I was a rock drummer. Cut off shirt. You know, you're like, cool. My dad wouldn't let me grow my hair out, so I did the best I could. Shaved the side, flipped it over, down to like my shoulder almost. Like, as cool as I could be, as close as a drummer as I could be. I wanted people to look at me and be like, oh, that's the drummer kid. Yeah, he plays drum. He's in a rock band. That's what I wanted people to see me as. But that's, that's not who I am today. Yes, I still play drums. Drums is an awesome thing. But my identity, I found my identity in God, and now, do I play drums? Yes, but I'm blessed to play drums. I'm blessed with a gift to play drums, and I'm blessed to use it to lead people in worship. I, I also was a hard worker. I'm not bragging, but I, I wanted to find... It's a good thing, all right? If you're a hard worker, the Bible says, do your work heartily unto the Lord as unto men, right? But I wanted to find my identity in that. So I, I cut grass. I cut grass all day. Worked long hours. Then at night, I'd help do construction. Worked till like 1 in the morning. So I'm working these long hours. People would look at me like, dude, that dude's a hard worker. He's cool, you know? That's what I wanted people to see me as. Is it wrong to work hard? No, I think all of you should work hard. If you have a job, do your best at it, because that's what God wants. But don't find your identity in being a hard worker. Don't find your identity in, in outworking everybody else. I cut grass, too. I cut grass with Jake. Give it up for Jake. We, we both weed-eated 
for years, and I, like, we made competitions out of it, and Jake did his best. He did. I always won. <laughs> no, but that was my goal. That was one thing that I wanted to identify as. I wanted to be the fastest weed eater guy. You might like, okay, that's, that's dumb. All right, I did. I wanted people to look at me, whether or not they were my friends that I worked with, or they were people just out seeing me work, be like, dude, that dude's a fast weed eater guy. That's not a bad thing, right? But the problem was, my identity was in that. My identity was running around with a weed eater and not in God, not in giving the glory to God for the gift that he blessed me with. I wanted people to know that this is who I am with all these different things. I wanted them to think that this is who I am. I, I am all these things. I'm a good person. I'm a drummer, you know? <laughs> but that's, that's not what God wanted me to do. It's okay to do some of these things. The, some of these things are even really good things, but they become a bad thing when you place your identity in them. So how, how do we define ourselves? I wrote out a list of things, and there's a whole lot more. But these are just some examples we'll go through of things we can define ourselves as, things that the world around us, the culture around us, throws in our face, throws at us, and tries to pull us in, excuse me, pull us in to define ourselves and pull us into a different identity. Just like, just like, the Babylonians, King Nebuchadnezzar tried to pull Daniel and his friends out of their Israelite culture into a completely different culture. That's what the world's trying to do to us. It's trying to pull us into the culture around us. Culture today has made identity about so many different things. A big one being your sexual identity, right? Some people may be like, I identify as pansexual. Or, I'm bi, or I'm lesbian, or I'm gay. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Did you just say he? I am an it they. Get it right. Oh my gosh. I, did you look in my Instagram profile? It had my pronouns. It ha I am an it they, right? People, this, I'm not making this up. It's funny. And you may laugh at it, but these are real things. People choose this. They're like, well, I don't know where to fit in. I, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna ch I'm a guy, but that, that's where I was born. But I'm going to become a girl. I think I'm going to be a girl. I, that's what I want to identify as. That, what are you, is that crazy? Is that crazy? Am I crazy? Like, what is the world offering us? You know, it could be in your social media bio or your social media page, you could find your identity there, right? That's a big one. Because you're, you're this person, I'm this person. I'm like, oh, I don't really have that many friends. I'm kind of shy. But you should check out my Instagram page. It is fire! Dude, I was out camping. You should see all my edited pictures on there. I look like a queen. Like, every, everybody sees you on your social media. And they look at you, you're getting all these likes, girl, you're gorgeous. Or like they're looking at you and, and they're praising you and, and you're fine, you hide behind your Instagram of like, this is who I am. But that's not who you are, right? That's just something you're choosing to hide behind. Could be what you stand for. I'm a feminist. I'm all about feminism. Girls, girls, girls rule. I'm a, I'm a Trump supporter, right? Trump 2024! That's me! You're like wearing the Trump 24 hat, American flags, make America great again. Like, that's who you are, people. You walk into church and like, oh, that's the Trump dude. Is that, is that you? Is that? Maybe it's Joe Biden. I don't know. Maybe it's your interests. Some things you're interested in. That's what you want to identify as. I'm a football player. You ever see the, the high school football players? If this is you, I'm sorry. You need to change your identity. The football players, they're walking around. They always got their football in their hand. They're just like, 
there's something about them. They're like, oh, the dude's a football player, like everybody knows. Or like the basketball players, they're like always got a basketball dribbling it between their legs. They come to church with it, spin it on their fingers. They're taking a shower with it. They're using it as a pillow. Like, all right, it's like, all right, we get it. You're a basketball player. Like, no one cares. But this is what, this is maybe what you're trying to find your identity is in finding it in basketball. I'm a basketball player. I play, ba- I, I'll say I'm decent at basketball. That's not my identity, though. You don't see me just like drumming. I'm a drummer. That's not where my identity is. Am I walking around with drumsticks in my back pocket 24 hours a day, spin them around my fingers? Be like, oh, you play drum. I play drums. Like, I'm trying to get attention because I want people to know that this is who I am. This is the group of people that I fit into. Whether, whether it's a football player, a basketball player, whether it's a dancer or a volleyball player. Like, you could, these are all things you can choose to set your identity in and hide behind. And, and it's, it's ways that the world around you is trying to pull you away from God. A couple more that are big friendships, right? I'm this person's best friend. <laughs> We're besties. Dude, this is my bro. Yeah, dude. Sick. We're bros. I'm, I'm so-and-so's bro. You walk in, they're like, oh, there's those bros. They're bros. That's who they are. Like, you just know, right? You just know. Maybe, maybe, okay, okay. Maybe it's in your dating, all right? Ooh. I have a girlfriend. We're a couple. Or... Or, this is my boyfriend. I'm supposed to be a girl. This is my boyfriend. <laughs> Maybe you find your identity in, in someone you like. You know, and it's easy to look around you. I had, I was single for a long time. And, okay, don't laugh. <laughs> All my friends, listen. I was like 21, 20, 21. All my friends had girlfriends. All my friends were getting married and having kids. I was like, all right, all right, okay, okay, all right, that's fine. I need a girlfriend. I got to fit in. I got to fit in with the couples. I can't show up to their house and be the single dude. You just feel out of place, right? You feel, you feel wrong. Going over to the couple's house, like, oh, hanging out with the couple. They're a couple, but I'm single. It's like you feel like... You don't fit in, right? You're not going to go hang out with those. Right? Because your identity is my dad. My battery died. That's not my identity. My identity wasn't in battery. Yeah, great. Yeah. Oh. 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 Got it? Are we good? Can you hear me? There we go. All right. So my identity, though, like I, I didn't want to go hang out with these people because I didn't fit in. I didn't want to go hang out with, with if I'm a football player, I'm not going to go hang out with the basketball players. or I'm not going to go hang out with the musicians, right? Like I'm a, I'm a football player, dude. Like what do you mean? Musicians? Pfft. Like I, I knew a friend that found his identity in the gym. This dude was my best friend at the time and like was on fire for God. Well, he started going to the gym, working out and got into steroids and all sorts of bad things. And that became his life. Literally, the gym ruled him. He was there like twice a day, eating so many calories and so many proteins and whatever to be healthy and get fit. But you know what he did in the process of that? He rejected God from being his king. He rejected God from being his identity. The world tries to offer these things to us, throw these things at us to make us feel like we have somewhere to fit in. It doesn't matter where. You can find somewhere to fit in. You can find somewhere to identify, somewhere to define who you are, right? Right? I want you to turn to 1 Samuel 8. 1 Samuel 8. This 
this is talking about the Israelites. Now, the Israelites were God's chosen people. They were in slavery in Egypt for years, oppressed, like terrible place. God pulled them out of that. He's like, I'm saving you from that. Led them through the wilderness into this promised land, defeated all their enemies, and like just walked before them. Now the Israelites, now they're a nation, they're in this new land, but they're, they're different from the people around them because they didn't have a king like the rest of the nations, right? All the other nations, they had a king to rule over them. They, they had a king to, to be the authoritative picture, but the Israelites were different. These were God's chosen people. God was their king. And so... There were, there were times God raised up priests and prophets and different leaders to help lead the nation of Israel. But God was ultimately their king. So we, we pick it up in 1 Samuel 8. And this is where the Israelites are coming to Samuel. Samuel was their, their, the priest or the prophet. He was the one leading them at the time. And they, they come to Samuel, pick it up in verse 4. 1 Samuel 8, 4. So all the elders of Israel gathered together and came to Samuel at Ramah. They said to him, you are old and your sons do not follow your ways. Do never call a girl old, okay? You are old. They're like, you're, you're done. Your sons, they don't love God. They're done. We want a king. Now appoint a king to lead us such as all the other nations. What did, what did it say? What? Such as all the other nations. We want to be, look at all the people surrounding us. They got, a, they got a king. Why can't we have a king, Samuel? We want a king. Give us a king. Verse six. But when they said, give us a king to lead us, this displeased Samuel. So he prayed to the Lord. The Lord told him, listen to all the people are saying to you. It is not you they have rejected, but they have rejected me from being their king. They've rejected, God said, they have rejected me from being their king. So in the process of them trying to fit in with the nations around them, trying to fit in with all the other, the, the culture, society, what, what it looked like, every nation had a king, God was their king, but you can't see God. God didn't come in, come in human form and sit on a throne in Israel, right? He's God. So they're like, we, we want to look like the people around us. But in doing so, God says, they've rejected me. They've rejected me from being king because they want to look like the people around them. They didn't want to be misfits, right? They didn't want to be the weird nation, the weird people that stuck out. People come walking by, look at Israel. They're like, what is, what is up with these people? They don't even have a king. Like, God, what? God's their king? <laughs> like, who's God? Like, what do you mean? Right? They didn't want to, they didn't want to stand out. They didn't want to look different. Culture got them to accept that. Rejecting God completely. All the world is trying to offer you is trying to pull you away from God, pull you away from finding your identity in God and what God has to offer, right? It's like a horse pulling a carriage. You ever seen a horse and buggy? Maybe like two of you? Have you never seen a horse and buggy? I've driven a horse and buggy, okay? Don't be jealous. It's pretty fun, but it's like a horse, right? The, its job is to pull the carriage, pulling them along. It looks over to the right. Ooh, look at that barn full of hay. Whoa, it, it's, the carriage is flying across the grass. Like, this is, this is you, you're the horse, and the world around you is trying to pull you all these different directions, right? But God, God has a different plan. 
God had a different plan for the Israelites and he has a different plan for you. God set the Israelites apart, right? They were God's chosen people. Turn with me to Deuteronomy 7, 6. This is him, this is God telling the Israelites, for you are a holy people to the Lord your God. The Lord your God has chosen himself or chosen you to be a people for himself, a special treasure above all the peoples on the face of the earth. The Israelites were God's people, right? He chose them to be different. He chose them. He brought them out of Egypt. He put them in this land. He wanted them to be different. He wanted them to be set apart from the world, his children, so he could be their king. God called you to be set apart, right? As children of God, as believers, God's called you to be set apart, to be different. You're in the world, but you are not of it. God's called you out of that. He's called you out of darkness, out of, the, out of a place of judgment, a place of sin. Jesus sent his son to die for you, to cover all that and to take your place. 1 Peter 2, 9. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. God's brought you from a place of sin. You, you don't, if you're a believer, quit living there. Quit living in the world. That's not you, right? God set you apart. You're different. God loves you and he has a plan for your life. He doesn't want you to, to run off to the world. Just like the Israelites, did God want them to have a king? No. God, God said, I've chosen you. I will rule over you and you will be my people. And the Israelites were like, nope. We're, look, look, I'm not gonna be that different. I'm not gonna be that, that, that person that sticks out. I'm not gonna be the person that is, is a Christian that everybody looks at and is like, who, weirdo? You go to church? And they rejected God in the process of doing that. If, you're, if, if that's you saying, no, I, I don't want to put my identity in God. I, I'm a Christian, but I don't want to go to school and, or, or go to work and, and let everybody know I'm a Christian because then they'll know. You're not placing your identity in God then. You're placing your identity in something else and who knows what that is. If you're a Christian, your identities should be in God. It is in God. Just like me, I shared with you the different things I try to find my identity in. I gave my life to Christ and by the grace of God, I'm, I'm a follower of him. I want people to look at me. I don't want people to look at me and be like, oh, there's the drummer, he, he, he's a drummer. Or, or oh, he's, he's a really good person. Or, He's cool. I don't want people to look at me like that. I want people to look at me and see Jesus through me. Look at me and say, Elijah is on fire for God. Galatians 2.20 says, I've been crucified in Christ. It is no longer I who live, but it's Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself up for me. It's not me who lives. It's not, it's not me who chooses what I wanna identify as. It's not, I, it's not me, I, I'm gay or I, I'm this or I'm that. No, if I'm a Christian, if you're a Christian, that's not who you are. Christ is my identity. I'm a new creation. It's Christ who lives in me. And I'm not, I'm not scared to tell anybody. I will walk anywhere. And if someone asks me, or 
I don't even need people to ask me, right? I'm out telling people, I serve a God that is greater than anything this world has to offer. That's who I am. Instead of being the person that tries to follow the culture, follow the, the, everything the world has to offer and fit in with everything society brings, I'm the person, since I have my identity in God, everybody's trying to follow me. That can be you. That is you if you are a believer. People look at me and they're like, he serves God, I'm serving God too. Look at him. He loves people. He's just always joyful. Like, what is up? I want to be like, I, I'm going to be a Christian. What, what does that mean? They'll look at you and they'll be like, that's who I want to be. Instead of you being the person that's trying to fit in. No, claim your identity in Christ. As a Christian, don't be afraid of that. God says in James 4, 8, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. John 15, four, abide in me and I will abide in you, right? We, we have to spend the time with God. Spend time praying, spend time reading, just as Pastor Josiah mentioned the last time we met. It's so important to spend time in the word. If God's your identity and you're waking up trying to post your picture, your status, God's not your identity then. You're trying to be this person. If, I'm, if my identity is in Christ, I'm waking up every morning. First thing I do before I pick up my phone, before I do anything, I'm opening up my Bible. I'm reading, I'm praying. I'm asking God, what can I learn Speak to me so that I can, I can share with the people I see today what you've spoken to me. And I, and I can share to the friends that I have what you're doing in my life. I talked about the horse. Remember the horse in the buggy? Sees everything the world has to offer? Well, if you've ever seen a horse and buggy, a new horse that isn't trained well, what do they have over their eyes? They have little blinders, right? Protecting, protecting them from seeing anything from the side, anything that they wanna look at from distraction, from looking at the road and from where they're supposed to be going. You need blinders in your life. If you're getting distracted by the things the world has to offer, if you're getting pulled to what the person sitting next to you is, it doesn't matter what the world is offering. Set up the blinders. In the way you do that, you're in God's word. Read what God's word says, right? You're, you're, you're trying to figure out your sexual identity. Read the Bible, it's clear. It is very clear. Being gay, being lesbian, whatever, whatever your pronouns, no. God created man in his image, not to give yourself a weird pronoun. Get in the word, set up, set up the blinders, ask God, what, what do you need me to change? What, what is distracting me? What is pulling me from keeping my eyes set on you and holding me back? Maybe you're struggling with going to school and, and you're like, I, I'm, I'm scared to, to talk to people. I'm, I'm, I'm scared for people to know that I'm a Christian because I don't know. It's probably because you're not in the word. It's probably because you're not praying. It's probably because you're not seeking God. If God was your life, what comes in flows out, right? Pastor Josiah has talked about that a lot. It's like a sponge. What you soak up is what you put out. If your identity is in God, you're soaking up his word. You're soaking up everything he has for you. Everything else goes away. And you're, you're pouring out what God's speaking to you because you're spending time with him. You gotta die to yourself. Whatever, whatever you want, any selfish desires, remove them, right? As a believer, 
It's Christ who lives in me. It's not, it's not me. It's not what Elijah wants, Bob. It's not, it's not what I want to fit in as or what I want people to see me as. As a Christian, God, they, they look at me and they know, they see Jesus. They look at you, they see Jesus. They don't see anything else. All these other things are, that you do are good things, whether you're a drummer, a soccer player, whatever it is, good things. An artist, all the glory should go to God, right? It's all God and then what God's blessed you with. Set up blinders. Take the time this week. Ask God, what, what, what's distracting me? What's, what's pulling me away from you? Is it, is it my social media? Is it my phone? We just went on a social media fast in youth. I hope you participated. We're doing it in Seesaw. If that's, if that's something you're struggling with, take a break from it. It's not going to end the world. It's not. What's it going to do? It's going to give you more time to spend with God, right? A lot, of, a lot of us spend way too much time on social media. If you look at your screen time, you're pushing five, six hours. That's a huge part of your day. A huge part of your day. If that's what you're struggling with, put it aside. If you're struggling with being known as a basketball player, like, it's not bad to play basketball, but don't carry your basketball around everywhere. No one, want, no one wants to see that. No one wants to see you spin it on your finger. Use your pillow, don't use your basketball, right? No one cares. God doesn't care. He wants you, God's standing there, he's saying, please, find your identity in me. I want, I want to rule your life. I want to show you what to do. But you're out, you're out looking in the things the world has to offer. You're out looking in all the different ways that the society's trying to pull you, what your friends are doing. But that's not what God wants. God, God, God wants you to come to him. Maybe, maybe you don't know Jesus here tonight. Maybe you've never met Jesus. You've never allowed Jesus to come in your life. You're like, how do I find my identity in Jesus? I don't even know who Jesus is. Like, I don't, I, I don't have a personal relationship with him. Why, why would I identify in him? I like who I am. People like me. I fit in. Trying to find your identity in the world is an endless strive. Me trying to be a good person was endless. Day after day, waking up, trying to please my parents. What do I have to do to, I, I gotta serve this so my parents will be happy. I gotta serve here so, so I don't look stupid. It, it was just, it would it wear me out. God says, in Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28, come to me all who you who labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest. You don't have to strive. When I, when I allowed Jesus into my life and allowed Jesus to rule my life, I didn't have to strive. I wasn't trying to look good in people's eyes or, or do this so I could fit in. It didn't matter. All that mattered was Jesus to me. With Jesus, he says, I will give you rest. It's, it's a peace. Now I look at, I still serve. I serve all over the place. I'm in Seesaw. You should go there. It's a really great Bible school. I get to serve all over, but I don't look at it. I don't go there now being like, oh, I gotta, I gotta keep up my identity. I gotta keep up how people see me so, so that they look at me and they're like, oh, he's a good person. Oh, he's serving really hard. It's like, I'm striving. No, I wake up every day 
knowing that this is an opportunity that I have. Serving in the church, serving, serving in youth, serving on Sunday, it's, it's an opportunity we get to do. And if you're not serving, please serve. It, it is such an opportunity. If you've ever heard Pastor Lee preach about it, it's something we get to do. It's not something that we have to do, something that we, we strive to do to keep it. Ever since I found Jesus, that all lifted off. I'm free. I don't have to, I don't care what people think. I don't care what they see me as. If they, if they don't like me, I know I'm going to heaven when I die. 2 Corinthians 5, 17, I mentioned it earlier. Therefore, if any was in, is in Christ, he's a new creation, right? Old things have passed away. Behold, all things are come, have come new. If you're saying, I, well, I, I have this pastor. This is who I am. Like, it's never going to change. Like, what do you mean? I can't change who I am. This is who I am. No, if you, say, if you accept Jesus into your life, if you accept, accept Jesus into your heart, that's gone. You're a new creation, a new creation in Christ. To the verse I said earlier, it's Christ who lives in me now, right? It doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter your past. It doesn't matter where your identity is now. If you place your identity in Jesus, the rest is gone. In the way we do it, I wanna, I wanna give you the opportunity here in a second, if you've never accepted Jesus into your heart, the way we do that is by confessing with our mouth and believing in our heart that Jesus is Lord. Saying, Lord, I see all the world has to offer, but I see what you have to offer. Rest, peace, peace. I don't, I don't have to look like the rest of the world. I don't have to look like all the nations around me. I don't have to have a king or something else ruling my life. I can have Jesus. 